Mike check one two one two it's the y2k collector and choice is an illusion no but seriously um so today is a very peculiar day and i felt like it was important for me to film another video normally i don't do two videos in one day but um without even you know realizing it you know i, w I went through the whole day without realizing that today is actually february 29th and this is a leap year um, it totally got by me that today is actually a, a leap year and we're not going to have another February 29th for another four years, which is which is kind of weird. I don't even know why our calendar is set up that way, but it is. And I decided to um, kind of use today to get into the second um, installment of the Matrix series. Now, for those of you who've been following the channel, you know that with all of the introduction of AI and with the introduction of the Apple Vision Pro and just with all these advancements in technology, I've been just kind of diving into some of these older films, which kind of foreshadowed some of what we're seeing in uh, society today. And um, as I get into The Matrix Reloaded, which I mean, many of you have probably seen The Matrix Reloaded, but um, the second installment of the Matrix trilogy is when Neo really begins to find out um, a few things. Um, one, he finds out that he's not the only one. He realizes that he's the sixth anomaly. Um, and really the thing that separates him from, I guess, the rest of the anomalies is his love for Trinity. And so he's put in a position where he's forced to make a choice. Um, he can either choose to save Zion or he can choose his love for Trinity. And clearly we all see in the movie where he makes his choice. But um, without, you know, I guess, spoiler alert, despite him choosing Trinity, it doesn't change the ultimate outcome of what happens. I mean, he still winds up going to Machine City. He still winds up returning to the source um, and resetting the mainframe. And everything kind of goes back to where it was. The only difference is that now... Um, the agreement has been made where those who want to leave the Matrix, um, they now can leave the Matrix if they choose to be freed after they've been shown that the Matrix isn't real. Um, they have the option of leaving the Matrix if they want to. Now, obviously, this isn't good for the machines because um, the more humans that leave the Matrix or unplug from the Matrix, it makes it difficult for the machine to operate because they're using... Um, the humans as batteries. And obviously we can draw the analogy between um, us here today, right? There are so many things that have us plugged in and video games is one of them, right? We can be so plugged in to our video games, to our systems where we're just constantly playing day after day after day. We're just plugged in um, and we become almost mindless drones where we just kind of develop the same routine. We get up, we eat breakfast, um, maybe we go to school, maybe we go to work, and all we're thinking about is just coming back home and uh, plugging into that thing. And even if it's not video games, maybe it's YouTube. Maybe you come home from work or school every day and you sit down and you're plugged into YouTube and you just watch YouTube videos all day. Or maybe you watch sports all day. Maybe you put on ESPN. I'm a huge ESPN fan. I'm a huge basketball fan. Um, maybe you just veg out to basketball all day, or maybe you watch cooking shows all day, or maybe you, uh, who knows what it is, right? Um, but the point is, is that I think that, you know, what the Matrix, the second one showed, has shown is something that I think a lot of us realized coming out of the pandemic, um, 2020, right? Um, 2020 kind of showed a lot of folks how plugged in they were into their daily mundane routine lives. And what the pandemic did, especially with, you know, locking us down, is it put us all in a position where we now have to come face to face with the mundane, with the routine, and kind of really see where we're at in life and uh, choose to make a change or not. And I think it's just very, very interesting as I watch the, the movie uh, and I watch the second installment of The Matrix, kind of find myself saying, okay, am I plugged in or am I unplugged? Am I, um, am I plugged in or am I unplugged? And I think if you've ever gotten to a point where you feel like each day is each day that you're living is like a bad rerun. It's, it feels like 
you're just doing the same thing day over day over day. I think that's when uh, I, folks start to really question whether or not they're really plugged into the matrix. And I think one of the ways that people um, kind of shake things up and get themselves, unplu- get themselves unplugged is by doing major things, right? Whether that be taking a solo trip across the country, or maybe it's by selling your video game collection. Maybe you decide to unplug and you just get rid of all of your video games and start over. Maybe you start a new hobby, or maybe you go out and build uh, new friendships. But whatever the case may be, everyone has their own way of unplugging from whatever system they're they're in, um, whatever it is they're doing, um, whatever just feels extra routine, just so mundane that you keep going at it over and over and over again. And I think that's kind of where we're at right now. Now, my hopes are that, um, you know, with the introduction of some of the things that I was talking about earlier in the week, like, you know, Sora, um, OpenAI, Apple Vision Pro, hopefully that you know, the the way though that technology is rolled out, hopefully it's not so tantalizing to the general audience or to the general public that they decide to plug back in, right? Um, uh, because of how, I guess, uh, how glittery, glittery and glamorous it looks. Hopefully we can stay in this unplugged state and continue to um, live real life. But choices, right? It's a choice that we're going to have to make. And You know, just like in the movie, um, you know, the Oracle tells Neo, she says, you know, we cannot see beyond the choices we don't understand. And um, in whatever you're deciding to do, you have to understand why you're doing it um, and what the end game is, because if not, uh, then what are you doing it for? Right. Um, You're never really going to understand what you're doing and you're never really going to be able to find true purpose, which is another huge theme that I, I saw and continued to see throughout the second and third installments of The Matrix. So so Y2K Collector, where are you going with this? Where are you going with this? Where I'm going with this is that in whatever you're doing, especially when it comes to video games, if you're building a video game collection, if you are trying to um, get into the hobby, what's the purpose? What are you doing it for? Are you doing it to for, as an investment? Um, because contrary to what a lot of people might say on YouTube, video games are an investment. They are items that hold value. They do retain value. And we know that they retain value because go on eBay. People are buying and selling these things all the time. And they're spending a wide range of dollars for them. Some games run you a couple bucks. Some games run you a couple hundred bucks. Some games are running folks a couple thousand bucks. But what's the purpose? Is it really for um, investment reasons? Um, and if it's not for investment reasons and it's something more personal, is it is it for a nostalgic rush is it for a nostalgic fix and if it is for a nostalgic fix fix rather how long are you going to live in that state of nostalgia how long um do you want to relish in those feelings before you decide to put those things away and move on in life and cherish the memories but let those things go what's your ultimate end game when you're done um is it going to be to sell the collection do you plan on giving it away do you plan on handing it down to your children um what are we all doing it for Um, Obviously, as I've mentioned in in past videos, I'm taking the time now to re-input all of the games that I have in my collection into the Game Eye app, but I'm continuously doing these things with the end goal in mind to say, okay, where is this all leading to? And I think for me, it's going to be a combination of things. There are definitely some games that I want to be able to enjoy with my kids. There are some pieces of hardware that I want to show my children. Like, I have to show my kids what a Sega Genesis looked like. Like, they have to know that. I mean, of course, I could show them photos and things like that, but I'm going to have to let them see, okay, this is what a Sega Genesis looked like, or this is what a Sega CD looks like. Now, I'm sure when I show it to them, they're going to be blown away. They're going to be like, Dad, they're going to look at my Sega Genesis and Sega CD probably the same way I was looking at like eight track players when I was a kid or, you know, um, some of the older camcorders that my, my father used to have. Right. But either way. Um, these are time capsules that hold memories and uh, and and they're, they're ways for us to cherish the past in some way. But there has to be an end game in mind. And whatever you choose to do, make sure um, that you understand the reasoning for getting into gaming. Because if not, it could just become a black hole where you just spend and waste a lot of money and you're just buying things and, and just, you know, you're just buying and buying and buying and it never ends. 
So that's my soapbox for today. Um, I will see you again on this day in four years. Um, today is February 29th, the one time we get to enjoy a 29th day in February. Hopefully you got to enjoy this extra day um, in the year that we got. And I will see you in tomorrow's video. Take it easy. It's the Y2K Collector. Peace.